what's going on in Baltimore, you don't ask the people who are committing genocide against you, will you police yourself? No justice! Police! No justice! No peace! No racist! Police! No justice! No peace! For a decade, we have had a huge problem with foreclosures and evictions. Between 2000 and 2010, 237,000 people were driven out of the city of Detroit because of the predatory actions of the banks and the corporations. The failure of the city government and the state government here in the state of Michigan to stand up to these bankers and to these corporations who stole tens of thousands of our, of our homes and jobs is an indictment. Living in her home for 60 years, her family grew up in her home. Uh, she should have been eligible for a poverty exemption. She didn't get it. She should have been eligible for step forward money. But no, they're busy spending tens of millions of step forward dollars to tear homes down yeah. rather than to save homes. They, they say she's too poor to get this money. This is an attack on all of us. Drones are killing people in Palestine, yeah. and they want to do the same thing here. Yeah. The airport across the street from me is now going to be rebuilt to be a drone site. I don't know exactly yeah. when it's happening. Yeah. Bro, that yeah. shit sucks. Yeah. The minority group in this country has become dangerous. To even breathe has become an act of resistance. Yeah. I urge people to unite together. We can't breathe. We can't breathe. We can't breathe. We can't breathe. No matter what your ideology, it is time for us to take back this country for us. When they're attacking us, we've got to come together and form an organization that ultimately can take them on and we can take this new technology and make a wonderful world and clean up this planet, right? Yeah. We know they're not gonna clean it up. Hello everyone. Um, yesterday I saw a tweet that really moved me and that really showed me the difference and the ripples that are being made with the current movements. Um, the tweet said, uh, I being a black man, I'm sitting in jail and I'm wearing a t-shirt that says pa Palestine on it and I'm sitting next to a Palestinian man wearing a shirt that says hashtag Black Lives Matter. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's really it's really beautiful and important to see all the different struggles that are coming together today and recognizing that this is also an apartheid state. Any place where there are different rules for different people, different treatment for different people, these are the struggles that need to come together and align and showing solidarity with these different movements is what's going to really build our liberation. That's right! Puerto Rico is also a colony of the United States. And we also have a political prisoner, his name is Oscar Lopez Rivera. If you guys seen the cutout and were wondering who he was, he is a Puerto Rican political prisoner that's been serving 34 years in federal prison. Uh, but he is serving 34 years for his role in the Puerto Rican independence movement. He, he was charged with seditious conspiracy and no right acts of violent crime whatsoever. So the maximum that you're supposed to get for seditious conspiracy is 25 years, and he's serving a 75-year sentence. We have to say that black and brown lives matter. This is state repression. So free uh, Oscar, justice for Rasbia, and justice for um, Terrence oh, Noah. You know, he came here saying he was no longer working for Jones Day. You know, he's no longer associated with, you know, after Jones Day got this huge payoff, you know, it's like he continued to work for him and like he was benefiting them. You know, we need to have a hundred thousand people right in the Justice Department demanding a RICO investigation of Jones Day, of Kevin Noor, of our, our governor, Tricky Dick Snyder. How we do it? Water is a human right. Fight, fight, fight. The free 
egregious thing, the most egregious thing, is that it took the health care from senior citizens. And I'm one of them. They knew that. They immediately uh, eliminated health care for persons under 65. Persons over 65 got health care. They then uh, took our annuity savings fund. I mean, this is a fund 100% that we put in. They didn't put in the money, we put it in. We're going to take it from people between the period of 2003 and 2013. You know, classism, racism never stops. Because that particular period, if you look at 2003, will be the 30 year anniversary of the first African American mayor of the city of Detroit, Coleman Alexander Young. So it disproportionately hit the African American population in this city. And we cannot tolerate that, all of us. All that was placed on Facebook in the last 48 hours from an assistant prosecutor of Kim Worthy's office. The assistant prosecutor's name is Tina Walsh. She says, so I am watching the news in Baltimore and see large swarms of people throwing bricks at police who are fleeing from their assaults. Fifteen in hospital already. Solution? Simple. Shoot them. Oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. In the discussion. Oh, I don't care what causes the pro pro protesters to turn violent. That is an assistant prosecutor here in Wayne County sworn to uphold the United States Constitution. That assistant prosecutor is saying no to the First Amendment. That assistant prosecutor is saying no to due process. That assistant prosecutor is another reason that state-sanctioned violence has been directed. Uh, for me, May Day is a day for all of us, of course, as everyone has pointed out so far, it's a day for all of us to unite in our struggles against a common enemy. But it also should be a day when we celebrate the victories of the working class around the world. In other countries, the literacy rate is going up. Here it's going down. People are More and more people are being put in houses in other countries like Venezuela. Here, more and more people are being thrown out. And I think we need to keep this in mind as we go forward, that we need to just not fight to stop the, the treachery and the, uh, the, the crap that we're facing here, but we need to think about where we want to take that. And trust me, they know, they, the powers that be, the 1% and their police force, know very well how easy Detroit could explode. They are very aware. Did you see the number of police that were down there and auxiliary police? We had a deputy chief down there, a commander of special tactical operations, a captain, and others. And they gave us a wide berth because they know that anything could set this city off. Not that we would set the city off. The foreclosures, the pension cuts, the lack of jobs, education, all of these things are terrible conditions that could explode at any time. But I wanted to say especially that the demonstrations, the press releases, the leaflets, the sound system, the camera crews, the t-shirts, they don't happen by themselves. It takes organization. And we cannot wait until there's a huge explosion to start organizing and training ourselves to give some leadership in a good sense to what is coming. Um, some young people a few years ago were telling me, uh, you know, everyone talks about the revolution when the revolution comes. And it's not going to happen. And my feeling has been the uprising, the revolution, the mass movement, that's happening whether you like it or not. That's happening because of the conditions that they're visiting on people. When it becomes intolerable, there will be an explosion. The question is, will it happen? Of course it's going to happen. Look at any history of any country. It's happened over and over. 
The question is, will we have enough organization in place to send people to speak at every location, to make more banners, more signs, train people. How many of you here ready to speak to a thousand people? Okay, I see three or four hands, but what if we have 20 locations where a thousand people are located? How many of you have press release skills, writing skills? This is all that we have to, so we need to encourage you to participate now before it explodes so that we have in place a general staff for the revolution, for the uprising. And we meet moratorium now and the Michigan Emergency Committee Against War and Injustice and the Stop Theft of Our Pensions Committee meet every Monday. We've been doing this for 14 years or so. Every week meeting, Monday, 7 p.m. at 59 22nd Avenue. And you don't have to know how to write a flyer. We'll get you working on some. Teach you how to do banners and silk screen signs. How many people here have learned how to silk screen sign uh, shirts in the last year? Retirees, put your hands up, sure. These are things we need to know how to do. So, especially our young people, if you don't have that experience, but everyone, come to Monday night meetings and get involved, get it. Chair a meeting, how many people have chaired a meeting? At our meetings, we try to rotate the chairs. So, so we're chairing a meeting of 20 people, but we may have to chair a meeting of 10,000 people. That's coming, and we need that experience and that confidence. So I want to encourage folks to get involved, uh, not just on May Day, but every week, get involved in building the organizations that can help give guidance and uh, support to any uprisings that inevitably are coming. Thank you.